Dr. Sidney Ritter was a psychologist attached to the district attorney's office. I told him I didn't handle criminal cases, but he insisted on seeing me. Now, what's this about Dave Parnell? Dave Parnell's a musician, a jazz pianist. He's in custody for the murder of his girlfriend, a modern guitarist named Maura Lane. I read about it. Why'd they call you in? It's a matter of routine on any capital charge, which might involve the question of sanity. For three days, I've been giving Parnell the works. He's not insane. Oh, so what's your problem? He's also not guilty. Well, the papers say he confessed. He's psychologically incapable of violence. He couldn't have killed this girl. Well, what's the case against him? That's the problem. It's perfect. He's found in the dead girl's apartment, passed out. A knife established as the murder weapon has his prints on it. And the motive? He was in love with the girl, and she had refused to marry him. Well, why did he confess? He's convinced himself that he did it. He doesn't remember what really happened. Wait a minute. He doesn't remember, doctor? He hadn't slept for three nights, and the doctor had given him a sedative to take. He was half-drugged. I know it sounds far-fetched, but it's what I believe. I've talked to the uh, district attorney. All I can show him are papers, Mr. Maris. And no matter how revealing they are, there's still only one man's opinion. Not proof. Well, why have you come to me? I'm in corporate practice. You know that. I know the kind of man you are, Mr. Maris. Dave Parnell doesn't want you. He doesn't want anyone. And that's why you've got to help him. He won't fight for himself, so someone has to fight for him. I've gone as far as I can go. Nothing but an opinion. Papers, but no proof. All right, Dr. Ritter. I admire your conviction. Now let's have a look at your opinion. Dave, this is Herbert Maris. He's an attorney. He may be interested in taking your case. Dave? I don't need a lawyer. Well, I want to know what happened. Well, you already know. The police will tell you. I'm guilty. It's easy as that. I still want to know what happened. I hadn't been sleeping very much. Is that how it started? I think so. The doctor gave me a couple of pills so I could sleep that night. Go on. Well, it's blurred. I can't seem to remember. She was playing the guitar. Maura Lane? Yes. I killed her. I loved her. I must have come into her room. I don't remember. We were just always fighting. I heard a scream. And I killed her. That's what I remember, her screaming. What else? What else can you recall? Isn't that enough? Dr. Ritter doesn't believe you killed Maura. But I did. I told you I did. How many times do I have to keep saying it? Counselor Dave Parnell confessed in black and white a complete admission of guilt. He wants to feel guilt. It's a compulsion. Oh? So now you're playing psychologist too, huh? Even if she'd been run over by a car, he would have felt responsible for her death. According to the doctor, he wants to be punished for hurting her, even though he may have had nothing whatever to do with it. All right, throw out the confession, with or without it. I've got enough evidence on this boy to convict him in any court in the country. Maybe. Counselor, I've been over this case from every angle. The district attorney is satisfied, and so am I. I am not. All right, go on with it, then. What do you want me to do? Show me the dead girl's apartment. We've been over it. I haven't. Because I'm working on five other cases beside this one. You're going to give me an ulcer. You've already got an ulcer. Now, are you going to show me the apartment or not? Well, Counselor, have you found anything we might have missed? What's in there? 
hallway to the bedroom. Was the window open or closed? The window was open. Oh, uh, the machine was on, the tape was blank. Oh, incidentally, it's been moved recently, if that's any help. It might be. How do you know? Well, there's an empty table there. Obviously, that's where the machine was. Whoever moved it made a scratch on the wall. Do you have a list of the witnesses? Yes, I have a list of the witnesses. Look, Herb, it's getting late. I've got a lot of work to get back to. Do you mind? No. Do you mind if I stick around for a yeah, If I did, you'd give me an argument. So go ahead anyway. Good night, Herb. And that's her, Mr. Maris, dead. And that's a picture of me. They took it right after the police got here. I'm showing them how Dave did it. How he did it? Did you see him stab her? Well, not really, but we went upstairs like a shot after we heard the scream. Uh, she was dead, and Dave was on the floor, all bloody, with the knife in his hand. It was a pretty wild scene. What do you mean, Dave was on the floor? Lying there. What was he doing? Well, uh... He was, uh... Yeah? He was asleep or unconscious or something. Well, that's interesting. It doesn't sound very much like a man bent on murder, does it? You told Lieutenant Weston that Dave and Moore were fighting all the time. How'd you know that? Mr. Williams told me. Records. She had a hundred new sides to cut. Each one better than the last. She was going to be the biggest thing in the business. Now, he killed her and I'm broke. Well, I don't understand that. I should think her death would make her old records extremely valuable. You know, the tradition of the great artist whose works only become worth a fortune after his death. Well, this is the record business, Mr. Mayers, not the paint business. Yeah. Well, let's get back to Dave Parnell. What's wrong with him? He was temperamental and hard to handle, moody. And he envied Moore's ability and her ambition. But he loved her. That's what he said. They fought all the time. They were due for a split up. That's why I killed her. And that's what I'm here for, Miss Michaels. I'm trying to find character witnesses for Dave Parnell. I'd like to help him if I can. He needs help. The only way I can help him is to find out more about him. You knew him pretty well, didn't you? Yes, a long time. What is it you want to know? I know he was a lonely child. He loved his music, his mother, and animals. In that order. I'm decent now. You can turn around. Well, I'd say you were very decent. Thank you. Lorraine, do you think Dave killed Maura Lane? Could you hook me up? I don't know. Did he have a reason? Was he jealous of her? Dave was never jealous of anybody. He wasn't that kind of man. Well, I mean, uh, was he bothered by her talents? Did he uh, envy her success? Of course not. He helped her all he could. She was an ambitious girl, Mr. Maris. She lived for one thing, her career, to be a star. And she had a chance. I understand Esteem Records offered her a contract. Dave told me about it. Didn't she have an exclusive contract with Williams? Not that I know of. Lorraine, how do you like singing for a living? I don't. I meet the wrong kind of people in this business. People who get under your skin, hurt you. Like Dave Parnell? Maybe. He did hurt you, didn't he? Yes. Do you hate him for it? Hate him? Dave Parnell is the warmest, kindest, most gentle man I've ever known. He... No, I didn't hate him. Will you forgive me? I have a couple numbers to do now. Lorraine, do you think Dave killed Maura Lane? Mr. Maris. I've been telling myself ever since this thing happened that, that Dave didn't love her enough to have killed her. But he did. I know he did. I only wish he could have loved me that much.
deeper I went into Dave Parnell's case, the more hopeless it seemed to become. I couldn't find one shred of testimony to back up Dr. Ritter's belief in his innocence. I'd had every door shut in my face. But Lorraine Michaels had given me one further possibility. Esteem records. I hope you don't mind if I keep on working while we're talking. I've got a new demo tape to get out by 5 o'clock. I'd just like to ask you a few questions, Mr. Lewis. It shouldn't take too long. Frank, uh... Let me have a mic on the import. Go ahead, Mr. Maris. Shoot. Your company was interested in Maura Lane. That's right. Maura Lane was one of the brightest young musicians I've seen in a long time. It's a pity she's dead. Did she have an exclusive contract with Williams? Well, Harry Williams liked to give that impression. Then she didn't. No, she had a what you call a record-to-record -record deal with him. Williams couldn't afford to give her the backing she needed, and she knew she had to move on. Was there much publicity on her? Just word to mouth. The disc jockeys liked her. What was Williams' reputation? Well, I don't like to knock people, Mr. Maris, but it was common knowledge in the industry. He never put any money back in the business. Actually, Williams has been on the verge of bankruptcy for the past few months. It was only Maura Lane's records that kept him out of the courts. I gathered that from what he told me. He said her death had put him out of business. Are you kidding? Her death has given him a reprieve. What do you mean, a reprieve? Just that. Williams controls all of her records. The publicity over her death will keep them hot. He'll collect enough money for the next two years to keep him going. If she had lived, he'd have been washed up in a month. I'm not sure. She was playing louder than I ever heard her. Somehow, I, I was in the hall near her room. Go on, you went to her room and opened her door. No, it, it was already open. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I did open it. I, I don't remember. I, I can't remember, Mr. Maris. I just can't remember. Bank. The door was open. Yeah, I pushed it. And you went inside? I think so. Did you or didn't you? Yes, I did. I, I must have. The music was still playing. Yeah. The music. Was the window open? I don't know. Try and think. Was it open or closed? It was cold. There was a wind. It was open. Good. What'd you see? Where was Mara? Mara? I don't know. I... I can't remember. I can't remember. Dave, I'm trying to help you. You've got to help me. You've got to remember. Yeah. All right. You saw Mara? Yes. She was on the couch. Good. Was she playing the guitar? Well, I... I remember the music. All right. What'd you do then? What did I do then? I killed her. How'd you kill her? With a knife. Where'd you get the knife? In your room? I must have. Did you or didn't you? I don't know. All I know is I, I had the knife and I killed her. I killed her and then she screamed. Wait a minute. What'd you say? She screamed, I killed her. No, no. You didn't say that. You said you killed her and then she screamed. I don't know. When she screamed. When? After. After I killed her. Well, she screamed. After I killed her. I know, I know, but you heard it. The boy said she screamed afterwards, after she was dead. He was confused. No, he wasn't confused. He was right. What are you talking about? Lieutenant, I'm making sense out of this. For the first time, Maura Lane screamed twice, once before she was dead and once afterwards. What kind of sense is that? Just this. I think I can prove that Parnell is innocent. All right, how? Come with me, Lieutenant, and I'll show you. Mr. Merritt. Hello, Miss Michaels. Come in. This is Lieutenant Weston of the police department. How do you do? How do you do? How much do you love Dave Parnell? What do you mean? Do you love him enough to help him? Yes. Good. I want you to do something for me. What? I want you to scream. Counselor, here we are in Maura Lane's apartment. You made the recording of Lorraine Michaels. What's this all about? We're going to play Maura's tape recorder. I told you she screamed twice. Well, this is how she did it. She was recording a number into the machine when she was killed. The murderer came into the room, but she didn't hear him. He walked up behind her 
and stabbed her, and she screamed into this microphone, but nobody heard her because the window was closed. Oh, but they did hear. That's what brought them up here. Exactly, but that was the second time she'd screamed after she was dead. Her recorded scream on tape with the volume turned up loud. And the murderer came in, found the machine was on, and he fixed himself a perfect alibi. He moved the tape recorder over here, in front of the window, opened the window, and turned the volume up loud so it could be heard all over the street. All right, then what? Then he went down to the bar and sat there drinking quietly till he heard the recorded scream upstairs. Oh, but you're forgetting one thing. The tape was blank. There was nothing on it. I checked it myself. That's right, because the murderer had turned it to a race. When? When he came upstairs with the others and discovered the body. Harry, will you? Hello, Mr. Williams. The usual? Yeah. You seen Larry Michaels? I'm supposed to meet her here. Uh, you know women, Mr. Williams, are always late. Alf Williams is keeping his date with Lorraine. Here it goes. would walk through that door and be accused and start fighting for his life. I had to do it. She was going to walk out on me. She was the only chance I ever had. Don't you say I had to do it. All right, Williams, you're going to have plenty of time for thought now. 